Hi guys, my name is Tensor. Today we're going to be building a speech-to-text recognizer application in Flutter. Let's jump right into this. I've got a very bare application. In the emulator you can see it's just an empty app. For this project we want to bring in a library called Speech Recognition. The current version of this library is 0 0.3.0 plus 1, so that will be the version that I will be using for this tutorial. Now along with adding this speech recognition plugin to our PubSpec YAML, you're going to want to go into your Android app source main Android manifest and then add permissions so that the application can access the microphone. And the permission that we need is this Android permission record audio permission. Now if you're on iOS, you're going to need to add two keys and strings to your info.plist file. You're going to need to add this NS microphone uses description key, and then you're going to need to add this NS speech recognition usage description key. Let's go ahead and import this library into our main.dart file so that we can start to work with it. So to make this work, we're going to need a stateful widget. So what I've done here is I've taken the scaffold out of the material app in the my app widget and I put it into this new class that I've created called voice home. Now notice this is right now a stateless widget. So I just click on the name here and then I can click the light bulb here and I can click convert to stateful widget and that will build out the code for me pretty easily. In the stateless widget, we're going to need a few fields. So first, let's define a speech recognition object, which I'm just going to call speech recognition. We're also going to be needing two booleans. One of them is called is available, and then the other one is called is listening. Is available will let the platform, that is Android or iOS, know if we are available to interact with it. And then is listening will let us know whether or not the application is currently listening to the microphone. By default, we'll set both of these to false. Then finally, we want a string called result text, and this will be where we actually put the text that comes in from our speech. Now that we have our fields, so let's go ahead and expose the init state function. And we're going to want to create a function inside of init state which will set up the plugin so that we can actually interface with the platform. Let's go ahead and call this function init speech recognizer. And of course, we want to call it in our init state function. And init will first initialize our speech recognition field with a speech recognition object. Now, for everything to work properly, we need to set up a bunch of different callback functions for the speech recognition object. So first, let's start with the availability handler. And we can set this up by calling speech recognition dot set availability handler. This handler just needs to pass back a boolean, and we can call set state so that we can put it inside of our is available field. So boolean result, and then return set state, and inside of this we have another anonymous function which just sets is available equal to result. Now we want to set up the recognition started handler. This is a callback function that gets executed when we start our speech recognition service. In here, we can just call another anonymous function. This time it doesn't have any arguments, so it's just void. And then we can just call set state and pass true into our is listening field so that we know that the microphone is currently listening. Next, we can set up the recognition result handler. This is what will give us back the result of listening to the text. And this handler will have a callback function which takes in a string, which we'll call speech, and then we'll call set state to take that speech and then put it into our result text field. This way we'll actually see the text as it's being spoken by the user into the microphone. We also need to handle when the recognition handler stops listening to the microphone. And this is a lot like the started handler. So we just say anonymous function, set state, and then set is listening equal to false rather than equal to true. Now that we have all of our handlers set up, we can go ahead and call to the speech recognition object, call to an activate function, 
and then take the result of this, which is a Boolean, and pass it into our isAvailable field. Again, we're just going to use setState and use another anonymous function to do this. All right, so now we have most of the logic for our application built. Let's go ahead and start to build out the user interface. So first we have our scaffold, and then inside of it, let's create a container. And then inside of this container, we'll have a column. And then inside of the column, we'll have a row. Inside of our row, we want to have three different floating action buttons. We want to have one that will allow us to cancel the user's speech. We want to have one that will allow us to start the user's speech. And then we also want to have one that will allow us to stop the user's speech. The main difference between canceling and stop is that when we cancel it, it'll just clear out the text box. And when we stop, it'll just stop normally and then it will keep the text. And actually, if we look at our application currently, you can see here the three floating action buttons are sitting in the top left. So we want to center them in the middle of the screen. We can first start by coming to our column here and changing the main axis alignment and the cross axis alignment to be main axis alignment center and cross axis alignment center. And as you can see, this pushes the buttons down to the center on the Y axis of our screen. And then for the row, again, we're going to change the main axis alignment and we're going to point it towards main axis alignment center. And then this will center our three floating action buttons. Let's add some more aesthetic to our buttons here. So I'm going to make the two outer buttons mini. And you can just do this by using the mini property and setting it equal to true. And then I'm going to change the color of them. So just background color. And for the first button, we'll have it be deep orange. And then for the third button, we'll have it be deep purple. And as you can see here, we now have our three different buttons and it kind of looks aesthetically pleasing. Let's also color the middle button and I'm just going to choose colors pink, which will give it a decent color to match with the other two buttons. Now below the row container, we're going to want a container which will contain the actual text that's being transcribed. So let's add that container here. And we can just use a normal container and then inside of it, we'll have a text widget with our result text. And as you can see here, it's just an invisible container currently. So let's give it some decoration. First, let's adjust the width of this container. We don't want it to go across the entire width of our screen. So we can just say media query of, pass in the context, grab the size and then the width property and then multiply that by 0 0.06, which will give us a 60% of the size of the width of the entire screen. Now let's add a box decoration to this container so that we can color it in. And we'll color it in with the cayenne accent, and we'll give this a shade of 100 to keep it light. So here's what it will currently look like in our application. And we also want this to be a little bit more aesthetic. So let's give it some rounded corners as well. So inside of the box decoration object, we can give it a border radius and we'll have the border radius be circular and then we'll give it six pixels. And as you can see here, now we have these rounded edges. Let's also give this container some padding. So I'm just going to call edge insets symmetric set the vertical padding to 8.0 and then set the horizontal padding to 12.0. And now it takes up a little bit more space and just looks a little bit nicer. Now let's go ahead and set up the floating action buttons to have icons inside of them. So first one will be icon icons cancel. Then the second one will be icon icons mic. And then the third one will be icon icons stop. And as you can see here, we get an X on the first one, then a little icon button on the second one, and then a little square on the third one. So now all of this looks pretty nice, but we need to add logic to the buttons so that they actually work. Let's start with our middle button, which is the one that starts the speech recognizer. Getting this to work is actually fairly simple. We want to run an if check. We want to check to see if is available is true. 
and if is listening is currently false, meaning we have access to the platform and we're not currently recording something, then we'll call to speech recognition and we just want to listen on it because it's just a stream and then we'll take the results and then print those results out. For our stop button, we'll have an if statement that just checks the is listening boolean and this will just check to see if we're currently recording and if we are then we can execute speech recognition stop and then take the result of this and then call set state and put that result into is listening. So this will turn is listening from true to false and it will also stop the recording. For the cancel button, the on pressed function is actually pretty similar to the stop button. We check to see if is listening is true and if it is, we call to our speech recognition object, we call to a cancel method and then we're going to have a callback function which takes the result, sets it into is listening, and then also clears out the result text box. This way when we click the cancel button, it will just clear out the entire box and then the user can start again. So there was one thing that I forgot to add to this part of our application. This is our icons mic button. As you can see down here, we're calling the listen function on the speech recognizer object. The problem here is that the listen function expects to get a locale. Now the locale that we're going to put in here is just going to be English US. And honestly, on the Android emulator, this shouldn't really make much of a difference. I found that even if I put in a locale like Spanish or like Japanese, it will override it with the phone's locale. From what I've read from the documentation though, this should work on normal phones and it should also work on iOS. There are a few settings that we need to set up on our emulator to make this work. If you hit the triple dots down here, this will bring up a little screen like this and then you click microphone. You wanna make sure to check virtual microphone uses host audio input. This will make it so that any microphone that you have plugged in your computer will directly feed into the Android device. I've also got the other two checked just in case as well. Also, when you click on the button, you may notice that you get this speech on error, code nine. This happens when the application doesn't have the permissions that it needs. If it happens to you like it just happened to me, then you wanna go into settings, apps and notifications, or just apps depending on the type of Android that you're using. Then you wanna click on the application name, which in my case is just test audio. And you wanna go ahead and click on permissions and then give it the microphone permission. And now it seems to be working. So let's click the mic button and see. I'm just gonna say a bunch of gibberish and see if it pops out as text here. You heard the little noise go when I clicked it and it should start to pop out and as you can see we do have some text here some of the stuff that i said just got cut off for whatever reason but we can click it again and have it retranslate some different speech test 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 is this working is this working test test and that seemed to work fairly well I'm actually finding that this text is way too small, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some text style to the text widget and make it so that the font size is 24. And while we're at it, let's make the width of the box a little wider. So I'm gonna make it into 0.8 instead of 0.6. And this is what it'll look like. So now it's a bit larger in width and the text is larger in size. So let's see if the cancel button functionality works. Hello, my name is Tensor, test, 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 test. And when I click cancel, you can see that the text just disappears from the box. Hello, my name is Tensor, test, test, test. Hello, 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 this seems to be working. Now I'm gonna put the stop button, and as you can see, the text stays in the box. Anyway, I'm sure you guys can see how useful this type of application could be. You can make an application where users could speak into the microphone and then you could save the text as some kind of to-dos or maybe some kind of note. Or you could even pass the text over to an email. 
and do all kinds of different things with it. Oh, and before we close out, I just thought I'd mention that this application actually was sort of requested by a user, though what they requested was a little bit more specific, and it's something that we will be doing at a later date. Anyway, if you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this tutorial, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.